Hello and welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy from Umbrella Arts Academy and I'm so excited to paint with you again today. So today we're going to be tackling this ladybug and if you are seeing this in the studio crew classroom, you are going to have access to not only this video but also the traceable for this piece as well as the full supply list. And if you are seeing this on YouTube, you will be able to follow along with us for this video from beginning to end. So let's go over supplies first and foremost. I'm going to be painting painting this in my watercolor journal. This is a Strathmore 400 series uh, watercolor booklet, 100% um, cotton paper. I am also going to be using my silver black velvet size 12 brush as well as my size 6 Princeton Select brush. So two trusty brushes that I use regularly. And also for our paints, we'll be using my core palette. This is, um, these are core QOR paints by Golden. I really love these watercolors. They're so bright and vibrant. And when I'm doing some really colorful, bright and vibrant pieces, they definitely do the trick. Um, so I am also using, last but not least, I am using ink. So you can see I have outlined this in ink already. And I am using a Micron pen size three. You can see right there, size three. So this is a really nice um, medium size tip for a Micron pen. Um, gives a nice fine line, but substantial enough that you can really see what's going on there. So any um, ink pen that has permanent ink, make sure it's not a water-based ink, but a, a permanent marker. Um, of ink will do for this project. I just like outlining it um, and sketching in some areas with the ink. We can return to this later on after we add the wash. Um, and I think it gives it a really interesting kind of look and feel and texture and just a whole different quality to it than just pure watercolor. So just a different way of doing things. So let's pull out some of our colors. I'm just gonna rearrange things here on the table so you can see them. All right, so for colors, I am going to be using Alizarin Crimson. Alizarin Crimson is a nice cool red color, so it doesn't have a lot of yellow in it. It's much more of a blue-toned red. And that is gonna be primarily for the majority of the ladybugs back there. I'm gonna be using Payne's Gray. Just ignore this blue color in here. That was from the last painting. Payne's Gray, and then also um, Sap Green, and I will definitely throw a little Cadmium Yellow into that Sap Green for some of our painting. So Sap Green, here we go, and then we'll be throwing in some Cadmium Yellow to create some variations in greens. So you can always make your own greens with yellows and blues that you have in your palette. If you don't have a green and you only have a primary palette, I'm a big proponent of mixing your colors. I'm just going to get a lot of extra water in my sap green here to soften it up for later on. Pull that out. So the green is going to primarily be the background and our ladybug is going to be our Alizarin Crimsons and Payne's Gray. Now I'm also going to introduce um, another color. Now I said ignore this blue, but you could certainly use it for this. Um, but I'm actually gonna introduce a dioxazine purple to this, but you could mix your own purples as well. But I have purple right here in the palette. It's a convenience color. So I'm gonna be using some of this dioxazine purple for my shadows. Um, I really like using color for shadows rather than just Payne's Gray, although Payne's Gray is great for shadows versus a black or a neutral tone because our shadows all have tones to them. They are rarely ever flat gray or black. Um, so I think it just, makes your paintings more interesting and more dynamic. So let's get started. We're going to first focus on the ladybug body and primarily the red parts. So we're just gonna put um, a wash. Now, when we're doing this, the top of the ladybug is facing the light source. So the sun from the, you know, just the sun coming down on the ladybug, is gonna create a lighter color up here than down below. And this ladybug is curved. So, 
her or his, actually I think ladybugs are mostly males, I'm not sure, um, but the carapace, this part on top curves under. So we're going to start and we're gonna go, we're gonna do our best to go around our little black dots here, but they are gonna be black. The ones you do have to be careful about are the white ones and I'll point those out as we go around. So working our way around and I started at the bottom because this area is going to be the darkest. This is going to be our first layer and then I'm just going to rinse off my brush a little bit, add a little water and just start to bring this up towards the top. And again, this is super light, but we are going to preserve some of these areas of highlight and we're going to bring the at the top, we're going to preserve that a little bit and we're going to bring the richness and the um, saturation or density to the bottom. And that's where you're going to see the majority of that bold color. Right. And I'm just going to introduce a few. And I love with this one, you can really let the watercolor just dropping in color wet on wet here and kind of letting it do its thing. You don't have to be too careful about a perfect wash. So these little ones here, the one in the middle is black, but these two are going to be white. So we want to be careful around those. These other circles towards the back are. All right, I'm going to pick up a little purple and just introduce that to the bottom. Now I'm going to rinse off my brush completely and it's just going to be damp. It's not even going to be wet and I'm going to blend this out to the top here. So we have a nice even blend. I'm going to push this up a little higher. And I'm actually going to pull in my size six brush, which is perfectly clean, just a little damp. I'm going to pull out a little bit of color right here. So an illusion of a little highlight there. And add just a little color around this side. Where that's kind of hooking down around and is a little darker. So there we go, that's the majority of our red and you can definitely introduce a little more purple towards the edge and the bottom. You can definitely do a few layers of this after this dries completely. If you're not satisfied with the, the uh, not the density, but the, um, the saturation of the red and you want it to be a more red or a deeper red, go for it and add another layer. Do the same process over again. All right. So you can see how that purple really deepens that color, that darker shadow underneath, um, but it's not like flat and boring and just black and gray. It's this beautiful color. Okay, so let's get into um, the head of our ladybug. And the majority of this is in blacks and grays, but again, their, um, their shell or the parts of their body, they have shine to them. They do have light parts um, and they are not flat black. So we are gonna keep that in mind and just remember the light is coming from the top. So that's primarily we're gonna see highlights. So we're just gonna paint a few of those in and I'm not being very specific. Do you see how I'm just leaving some white spots? I'm not gonna leave them completely white there, except for these round areas. We're gonna leave them completely white for now. So what I've done is I've just taken my brush, which is damp, has a little water, and I'm just painting inside and just touching the edge to kind of bring some of that black in there. But you can see how that is a lighter area. And you know what would be also awesome with this is if, as we're doing this and adding these layers and dropping in color, that we also add purple. Add a little bit of that purple tone to it. 
And the reason I really like using Payne's Gray for my dark areas is because it does have a hue to it. It's a very cool gray. It has a blue hue to it rather than black. Um, and you can get warm and cool blacks, but I just love Payne's Gray. And you can layer it enough that it really almost looks black. But again, rarely are you ever going to need black, 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 unless you're doing like a silhouette and even then. So I added a layer of purple. So we've incorporated some of that purple. I do see I'm, I have a little bit of a bleed here from this being still damp. No worries. I'm just going to go in with my brush. It is completely dry and just pull out some of that color. And I've pulled off some of the color underneath that wasn't completely dry from the red and the purple. No worries. I'll go back in on another layer and add another layer. I definitely think I'm going to do another layer. I can see as this has dried on this particular paper, it has brightened quite a bit. It hasn't held its contrast, which is okay. If this was on probably Arsh watercolor paper, um, it would hold the contrast or another 100% cotton. Um, I also use Bohong, Baohong, Baohong, um, Arsh. What are some other ones? Oh, and um, B paper, although B paper a little less, but they hold the con Fabriano works really well. It's a very thirsty paper, but it holds the contrast really well. Um, Strathmore, you know. There's something to be desired with Strathmore, but they make a great little sketchbook, so I enjoy them. All right, so this, and this is dry all around it, so I can feel pretty confident, but these are the black dots. So this one is black. Here. A little bit more. Let that one dry. Let's do this one over here. I think this is dry enough. And again, these don't have to be perfect, perfect. I like that we can leave a sketchy feel to them. They have this very illustrative quality. And now you can go in and I am going to add paint to my legs, um, but you could do them all in the ink if you wanted to. You don't have to add watercolor to all those fine details. And just play with it. Just drop in little bits, let it run a little bit in the area that you're in. I am going to try to get all this white in the black dots. I don't want to leave white out there alone. All right. So now we're, we have to, we definitely have to let those areas dry. Um, before I go back in and put another layer on, but I'm definitely going to do another layer that has lightened up quite considerably as it has dried. So let's work on, I will add some paint to the legs. So I already have these, this sketchy feel. So I'm using my size six. I'm bringing it to a nice point. See how I'm rolling it? Roll, roll, roll. So I have a nice point on it again. And then I'm just going to come in here and sketch my way through again, kind of following the lines. I've put down with the ink already, but not filling in completely every single one, leaving some little white highlight areas. And then these little mouth pieces, I definitely could leave. Great. So you can go in and I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave, maybe I'll mess with them a little bit. You can go in with a really, really light Payne's gray, like super, super light. Like that. let's add a lot of water to this. Just pick up a little and 
just put a little bit of contrast inside the white areas so they're not stark white, but not really fill them in. So give them a little dimension. You don't have to put anything in there. I sketched in a little bit too with my ink um, just to incorporate them, but you can leave them perfectly white. All right, so we're gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back and mix up some more alizarin crimson and purple and we'll add one more layer before we finish. All right, we are back. I am mixing up, bringing out some more alizarin crimson and really getting a nice saturated bit of paint here. So just enough water to make it flow. And I'm just gonna paint back over this section. I'm gonna go right over the purple and the red at the bottom here. I will add more purple in a moment, just like I did before. So we're basically doing the same process that we did before, as if this had no color in it. We're just adding a whole new layer. And I'm making sure it's super saturated. So you can see there, but I am going to, as I move up, I'm going to rinse my brush off and I am going to blend it out. I still want it to be lighter at the top, but I just want it to hold the saturation at the bottom. much better and let's drop in some purple down here and this is going to look super dark when I first put it in but I think we're going to be okay I think as it dries it is still going to lighten a bit so it looks super, super dark. So I dropped that in. I'm going to take my clean size six brush and just blend that out a little bit. And as you do this, you'll see, you know, as the red gets darker and darker, the, the spots actually look lighter and lighter uh, just because of their juxtaposition. So you may want to do another layer on them as well. All right, layer two is on there and I'm going to let that dry one more time and we're going to get ready to work on our background. So let's mix up some color for that. So I've already pulled out some green. I've got my sap green over here getting nice and saturated. And you can use any kind of green here that you want. You could go with a more viridian green, add a little bit of red to it um, to create some contrast, but I am gonna go with sap green. So this part in front is gonna be a little darker than what's going on in the back. And I'm just gonna add, so I'm gonna be really careful right around there because that's so wet, but the rest of this is dry. And I'm actually just gonna go right over the detailed little mouthpieces and probably even the legs because watercolor is translucent or transparent that we can still see those parts and you can always go over them again or add more ink with your ink pen at the end. So we're just going to finish this off a nice wash here. We are going to put a shadow under the ladybug after this dries. All right, so now we're going to go into the background and we're going to make that a much lighter yellower. Tone. So cadmium yellow, lots of that, and lots of water. Oop. All right, so I'm going to start And 
and this is kind of going, it's like going up and away. And again, we're really micro or macro looking at this through like a macro lens. We're really up close. So even though this is a leaf, the details are going to be, you know, our brain will kind of understand that you're in like a leafy green area, but the details are going to be all washed out. Oops, you can see I touched the edge of her booty here. That's okay. Just gonna, with a clean brush, just pull that out of there. No biggie. All right, so let's add a little shadow under our green leaf. And we're just going to do that with some pure sap green. So another layer underneath. You know, we're going to put a touch of purple under there as well. Now purple and green, this, especially this yellowy purple, they're not quite complementary colors, but there's a lot of yellow in this purple. So it is going to desaturate our green a little bit, which is okay for a shadow. Shadows often do get desaturated. They still have a hint of color. All right, I'm switching back and forth between my small brush and my large brush a lot here. So do whatever feels comfortable for you. I often do that when I paint, I kind of know what I'm gonna need as I'm approaching the next step and I kind of feel what's coming next. All right, so I am gonna take a little bit of this purple and a little bit of this sap green to make like a very muted kind of greenish brown olive color. And I am just going to add in a few suggestions of veins in this leaf here. That's it, nothing super detailed. I'm gonna soften them a little bit. There we go. All right, so the last thing we are going to do is some final details and I'm gonna wait for this shadow to dry under here and I'm gonna go back over with Payne's Gray, but while I do that, I'm gonna actually add a little bit more Payne's Gray to our dots and circles here, just to bring them in line with the contrast. So you can see how much lighter this dried than when it's wet. And you don't have to paint over the whole thing again. You can just drop in some darker areas, which is kind of what I'm doing. And this one stayed pretty dark back here. And then I'm just gonna feather these out a little bit. And then let them dry. So they'll have a little shape and form to them as well. Okay, and then last but not least, we're just waiting for this to dry right here. I'm gonna use my heat gun trusty heat gun right under the table whenever you need it. And I'm going to dry this by hand. All right, so that sped up the process quite a bit. And last but not least, go through and just add these on back some detail. And then if you 
once you're all done, if you find that you want to go back in and add any more, like I love these lines that are happening in some of the white areas. They're just giving it a lot of um, energy that I really like. We have this line down the middle where the, the wings split. I'm gonna enhance that a little bit towards the top here. And along the edges, I'll put in a few lines down here for shading. And then if you want, you could go in and add some, some leaf details. I know I put in a suggestion already of that, but this would be a great way to add. Some detail and texture to the leaf that's already on here. And there we go. Our ladybug is complete. I love how she turned out, especially in this sketchbook with these rough edges here. But we're just going to, when I take a look at these, you know, I'm just looking very simple colors, but looking for where I can add interest with shadow and color as well as texture of the ink for the ink and wash. So thank you again for joining me. I'm Shana Searcy from Umbrella Arts Academy. Don't forget to check out my supply list as well as the studio crew. If you're interested in joining the studio crew for a more enhanced experience, you can find all of that information in the description of this video if you're on YouTube. If you're already here in the studio crew, thanks for joining us. We'd love to have you as part of our studio crew membership. And we hope to see you soon. Happy painting and enjoy the rest of your day.